I'm Atubo George and I'm so excited to be bringing God's truth to you today. Are you ready to call forth your daily bread now? It's our daily bread. Praise God. It's, it's our daily bread. It's not, he didn't say weekly bread. He says daily bread, meaning call it every day. And Jesus actually said, ask for it. Give us this day our daily bread. Praise God. He didn't say give us this week. Give us this day. Praise God. So when we, when we declare it, when we call for it, we are actually filling in our requisition for it. Praise God. <laughs> Did you get that? So Father, say this with me. Say, Father, I make a demand today and I receive it, my daily bread, in Jesus' name, amen. Praise God. Now, someone shared this with me. I was saying, Pastor, do you know I noticed after we started praying this prayer, I actually receive money every day. Something just comes up. I've, he was just sharing with me that I have been receiving money every day. <laughs> Praise God. Now, that is the life of a believer. Oh, I've got a lot to share with you today. Praise God. Let's pray, Father. Thank you. Thank you so much, Holy Spirit. You are guiding us into all truth. Oh, hallelujah. We bless you, Lord. Thank you. Great and mighty things we will learn today. And our eyes are open to see your miraculous power. Thank you. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Praise God. You know, I was telling you yesterday, it is what. The ingredients of your mind, the ingredients of your belief, the things that stimulate your mind are the informations that you have exposed yourself to. If you expose yourself to the word of God, it will be easy for you to reason out a miracle. And I told you the other day that miracles, it's just here we call it miracle. Over there is the operation of God, simple operation of God. No, no drama, very simple operation of God. For example, you remember Elisha? He told the king, he said, look, by this time tomorrow, food is going to be so cheap in Samaria. <laughs> and when he said it, one of the men who heard him said, what kind of nonsense is that? Say, so even if, you know what a statement the guy made? Even if God opened the windows of heaven, that is impossible. The guy said it. And Elijah, Elisha said, you will see, because of what you have said, you will see it, but you will not partake of it. Now, Elijah, Elisha just spoke. But well, guess what? The Bible says three leopards, four leopards or three leopards, le some leopards who were at the gates of Samaria thought to themselves that, come, why do we sit here? There's no food. Nobody's throwing food at us anymore. If we sit here, we die. But the camp of the Syria is so far. Now, now the, the, the city of Samaria was shut. Nobody went out, nobody came in. Why? Because the Syrian army had come so close and created a camp. So from that, their base station, they were going to strike and enter the city. So in order to avoid that, the, they shut the gates of Samaria. They just, every city had a gate at that time. So they locked up the city. Nobody goes out, nobody comes in. So it would be difficult for the Syrian army to enter. So they were all there for many days. Now think about, I want, to I want you to understand what's going on. So they've been there for many days. Now the Syrian army, because they want to attack, had to make every provision available to, for them. So they got enough grains, they got enough food, they just got it stuck there. This city, ah, they are finished. If we're going to be here for one year, we'll be here for one year. So they piled up enough food. The king had made up his mind that, look, we are running down Samaria. And the man of God spoke. By this time tomorrow. Now, the person who heard him said, hey, 
That is in, now they were all in Samaria, so they didn't know what was going on on the outside. So he said, even if God opened, because you, you are reasoning it out like, what? How? Now, the lepers decided to move. And they said, look, there is food in the camp of the seer. That's where there's food. So let's go there. If we go there, what if they don't give us food? Eh, we die. What if they kill us? We die. Okay, but what if they see that we are lepers who can't harm them? And they just ask them, do you guys want to stay around us? And we say yes, and they give us food. We leave. So at least right now, there is one, one, one percent a chance that we leave. Let's go there. And they got there. Now, what God just did, the element of the miracle there is two. One is this. The Bible said the Lord caused the Syrian army to hear the noises of chariots. And they thought to themselves that now, you, you know, it's <laughs> it just to one person to spread the rumor. Now, whatever they heard, and I don't believe everybody must have heard that. Whoever heard that and gave it a meaning, he said, wow, look, man, it's like the Syrian army had called some partners to come help him with the one. They are coming with troops. Let us live here now. If not, we die. So the whole Syrian nation, they, you know, they didn't even think, how could the king of Syria communicate with an outsider? Nobody, there was no GSM phone at that time. Who took the news out? Who, who sneaked out of this place? At that moment, there was no time to risk because now that is where God's favor begins to work. So they all left the camp. Now these lepers got to their camp. Everywhere was quiet. They saw horses tied. They saw food, grains. And they said, oh, maybe they went on break, you know. And then they began to pack. They packed. They went to hide. They packed. They went to hide. And then one of them said, what you're doing is right. is wrong. Let's go tell them in the city. And they went to tell them in the city. Of course, those ones, they came to test the ground and see if it is true. They found out to be true. They went, they gathered everything. Now, when Elisha was prophesying that prophecy, the food he prophesied about was already at their gates. You know what I mean by that? It's already encamped around them. So when God said, I said, there are two things God did. Number one, he caused the, the, the guys to hear the sound of the the chariots. Number two, he brought the information by word of knowledge and word of uh, wisdom to Elisha. So Elisha spoke that as a prophecy. But the truth is, word of knowledge would have done that deal. And, you know, I was praying about this and then the Lord said this to me. He said, I had already told Elisha this to declare for a long time. But he was finding it hard to understand or to believe me. That's what the Lord said to me. Now, I believe the Lord. Praise God. Why? See, because <clears throat> Elisha waited until they were coming for his head. And then he now prophesied. It is not when they heard, he heard that they were coming for his head. And the Lord, what do I say? No, the Lord said, the Lord told me this. I have already told a lie. Now, if you walk with God, you will know this is the case. God never does anything in a hurry. He doesn't. Most times you will find out that you are the one delaying your miracle. You are the one. Because the Lord has already told you what to do. And that's how miracles work. Miracles, how you know something is a miracle? First, the word of God comes first. And the word of God gives you the direction to that miracle. When you obey, then you find an element of a miracle. Now, what is the element of a miracle? It's just an element of surprise. So, now, for example, you are not expecting money from anyone. And then you pray to God and say, Father, I believe you can give me this money. I trust in you, Lord. I, I receive it in Jesus' name. And then the next thing, your phone beeps and there's an alert. Someone has sent you money. I'm like, whoa, I just prayed two minutes ago. And, and here is it. Now, guess what? And, and this is the truth. It is not like when you prayed, God now said, hmm, who, who give me this? Okay, okay, you, go and get it. No, before you go to that place of need, God has already started working in the heart of someone to send you money. 
Now, it may have, God may have been working on that person for one week now to send you money. Or for a few days now to send you money. But then you get to that place and say, God, I need this money. And then God now takes the person, you know, hey, send that money now. And the person said, I just asked, like two minutes after I asked, the money hit my account. I am so, 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 so person, like, whoa. To you is a miracle. But to the angels, it is normal operation. What am I sharing with you? Get your mind to function like God functions. Now, that's what I was talking to you yesterday about the tithe. Sorry, last week. You see, it is, it is an operation of God. Alabaya. You know, that, that's why I look at people who, who, who fight tithe message. People who, who go, I, I don't believe. I don't believe in tithe. And I, I see them and I'm like, oh God, I feel sorry for these people. I feel sorry for them. Why? Because they are, they are far from the kingdom of heaven. They are far, I'm telling you, they are far from the, how, what do you believe? Truly, what do you believe? If you can't believe this simple thing, you know, you know why, is it, is it why they have a problem with it? Because their minds are abused. How, what do I mean their minds are abused? In their mind, they, they, they see pastors, maybe they see one pastor with a large congregation. You, you, you'll be amazed that a pastor with a large congregation will not talk like them. Not because the pastor is greedy, because before you got to that place where you have a large congregation, you must have learned some things from God. So someone sits down and he looks at a man with a large congregation and he looks at everyone and says, so all these people now will be paying tithes to this man and then this man have become so rich. It's foolishness to think that these people's tithes that have made a man rich. It's foolishness, complete foolishness. I'm telling the truth. If you're truly in ministry, you will not think that way. Because that's what people think. So, and then they say, something is wrong with these tithes. Something is wrong with these tithes. Most of it, the deep roots of their thoughts is envy and bitterness. And then with that heart, they begin to search the scriptures. There must be something, I know, you know the Bible, anything you're looking for, you will find it. Any interpretation you're looking for, you will find, you can construct it into it. You can. So that's why we don't study the scriptures to know the word of God. See, I've told you that before. It is by hearing the word of God that we understand the scriptures. It's not the other way around. If you go the other way around, you will misinterpret the word of God. But if you receive the word of God, and now you begin to say, Lord, wow. You see, because when God speaks to you, it comes with an understanding. Yeah. If God is telling you something, that, that message carries, you know, sometimes, for example, you're in a meeting, and someone ministering by the word of knowledge says, oh, there is a woman here whose name is um, Mary. Now, you go, Mary is a general name, so definitely somebody uh, yeah, should be answering Mary. Now, sometimes you see five, four people will come out. Even if the minister just stopped at there, said there's somebody else's name is Mary. But I'll tell you the truth. The particular Mary that he's been referring to will know herself. Some others whose names are, they bear the same name, Mary. We're just like, okay, maybe it's me, maybe. But the one to whom that message is for, without the minister going further to describe, you know, maybe she's wearing a red dress or maybe call her, so just say Mary. There is a Mary in that place that will know that this is me. So she may see others going out. She won't panic like, it's me. I know it's me. Why? Because anytime God speaks, his purpose of speaking is to reach out to you. So the one who he is speaking to has a perfect understanding. So when he says Mary, that Mary already knows that the Lord is ministering to her. And so her heart is open. The others are just wondering. So if you just look at all the faces of the people that come out, you can tell which one it is. I'm telling you, you can just tell. 
Because all of them, some are like, okay, so <laughs> I'm here to know whether it's me or I'm here. But there is one who like, I'm the one. It's just like when Jesus said, who touched me? It's okay, who touched me? And I know one thing. Jesus was looking at the woman with the issue. Well, he was looking at her and said, who touched me? Because he wanted her to own up. That's what's going to establish the miracle. So when God speaks, an understanding is transferred with the voice of God into our heart. So we know exactly what he's talking about. Our time is up today. This thing. I hope you're enjoying this. Now, if you're enjoying this, I would like to hear from you. Praise God. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Even right now, healing is taking place in your bodies. And the power of God is coming on you right now. You can, you can begin to check yourself. I see someone being healed in the shoulder the right shoulder yeah the right shoulder listen if you if you have any ailments in your body right now receive your healing get up and begin to do what you could just try it check it and you'll see you are healed praise god i'll see you tomorrow bye bye